definitely have your blocks accessible for the practice. We'll be using them. Um, if you don't have, for some reason, just grab something that resembles the shape, but um, come to the back of your mat and stand up. I know it's hard. Some, some of us just wants to want to go back into a sleep mode. Separate your feet, hips with distance and fold. Yeah. And a couple different options here when you forward fold. If you feel super tight this morning, bring the blocks with you and always use them to support your body. You can have your hands on them. Mm -hmm. You could claw the mat. Yeah, I kind of like move around the, block, the mat with my blocks, just not knowing like, how I'm gonna feel. So like my hands are here and you know, as I, as I fold a little more, maybe my blocks come a little closer to me, but my, letting the head like kind of detach from your body and always keeping a heavy bend in your legs. Yeah, so your, your hips lift super high up off your shoulders. Yeah, and if you're not kind of digging the hands on the ground or on the blocks, you can always take ragdoll. So you're, that would just be grabbing opposite elbows and folding. Yeah, you could take your hands behind your head and interlace them and kind of wrap your elbows in. Create a ledge for your stomach to rest on with a pretty super bend in your knees. Breathe the back side of the body open. Transfer a little bit more weight into the balls of your feet. Stay with it. So connect to the breath. The inhale is pretty powerful. The exhale, always try and tap in a little deeper, a little bit more of an exhale breath out. And then I follow it up with another really smooth, full inhale and a really powerful, deep exhale. If your hands are, are, your arms are a little bit more, um, like if more of like a ragdoll type arms, just let them go to the floor. Now, <clears throat> put a lot of attention towards your feet, take your hands down to the ground and really slowly start to walk out to dog. And you might notice that when you come to this dog this way from the back of the mat, your heels pop up, um, but see if you could just draw a little bit more attention to the back side of the body as you creep forward. And as you walk forward to this down dog, look at your hands and just make sure the index fingers are forward. Yeah. And the hands are relatively, you know, the width of the mat approximately. And then glance back at your feet. Your feet are, are set up. The toes are spread and you can bend behind your knees as much as you need here. So you could begin to just feel the expression of the pose, let the head, the neck out, just everything neutralize. Yeah. And sometimes you need to move a little side to side, pump out the legs, do a little, you know, the little dog dance. And then once you feel like you've settled in, you find a little bit of stillness, which is truthfully the hardest part of the practice. Like it's easy to move around a lot. It's hard to hold still. Right. And draw attention to little things in your practice. Like, you know, we do, we've all been practicing for a while. So you do the same motions, the same movements, you kind of go on automatic. So Draw your mind's eye to different things like the sides of your legs. Are you spreading your toes across the mat? Maybe feeling the center of your heel. Letting your head, your neck, everything just neutralize and moving your shoulders away from your ears. I find super helpful just for that external rotation. Then roll forward to plank. And when you come from dog to plank, lead with your chest. Yeah. Lead with your heart and chest without your head and your neck jutting forward. So your neck just stays super long and extended. And the drishti, known as your gaze, comes to the front skinny edge of your mat. And when you come to the plank, maybe notice that you have to modify. The knees can drop to support the pose and be okay with taking those modifications. Correct. Feel your outer triceps kind of hug in your navel draw into the back of your spine 
And then I'll encourage you to bring more weight forward onto your tippy toes. So you can begin to feel the proper alignment because plank position leads you to the next thing and et cetera, to the next thing. So hold plank, a few more breaths. Let the breath just kind of fuel the pose. Feel the support of the hands plugging down, activate, maintain. So finding stability and finding calmness. Arms and legs stay as straight as you can. Hips up and back to a dog and you may, may need to bend your knees as you do that. Let your head just go. Roll forward plank. So like a wave. Kind of find your sweet spot. Outer triceps grip in, belly's firm. Contract the thighs. Hips up and back to a down dog. Roll forward plank. Good. Drop your knees. They're a little behind you. I like keeping my toes curled just like this. Kind of feel like you're leading with your chest and just bend your elbows halfway at most to a supported push up. Find what works. Everyone's bodies are different. Re straighten your arms to a plank position. Lift the knees to a plank. Hips up and back dog. So we're just going to do that a few times. Try and move on the breath. Take it, take out as much or as little as you need. Roll forward plank. Drop your knees for supported plank. If you're taking on the push up, lower with a straight line to supported push up. Re straighten your arms to supported plank. Lift the knees to a plank position, engage. Hips up and back down dog. Let's do it one more time. Come forward to a plank. Don't rush through the steps. Drop your knees so they're on an angle. Lower halfway to a supported push up. Re straighten your arms to supported plank. Lift the knees to plank position. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Look forward with your eyes and see if you can land your right foot forward and through. Come to your fingertips. Yes. Just be on your fingertips for a second. Breathe your heart open. So almost like you're taking a little cat cow here. So just drop your shoulder blades down and look forward with your eyes. Keep the hands tented on the floor or on blocks and then round and look into the center line of the body. So if you need to drop your back knee, of course, do that. If you need to pl place blocks underneath your hands, do that, okay? So we're gonna take a few breaths here. So you're gonna inhale, sink the spine down. It's a very subtle movement. Keep gripping your outer hips in. And then exhale, round the spine deeply and look in. Keep the legs and the arms firm. Inhale, sink the spine down and look forward, small movements. Exhale, round the spine deeply and look in. Not a lot is happening, it's more how you feel. One more. Inhale, sink the spine down and look forward. Exhale, round the spine deeply and look in. Come to flat back, tent the left hand or use a block and just come into a very simple twist here, easy twist. You can also have your right hand on the flat part of your back if it's too aggressive this morning. Grip the hips in super strong. Look sideways or look up. Breathe your heart and your chest open as your spine stays very neutral and long. Look to the floor, right hand comes down. Just move the block forward. Slide back to a down dog. As you come back to this downward facing dog, roll forward with some energy to plank position. Lower halfway to your push up version. Slide through your up dog or baby cobra. I don't know what's going on in your body, but feel your way through this morning. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. So moving with control, look forward, land your left foot forward and through. Yeah, take a second to arrange the stance. Always know you can drop your knee. Grip the hips in strong. Claw the mat with your fingertips. Support if you need. Inhale, soften the shoulders and look forward. It's not a huge movement. It's more just like your mind's eye. Exhale, round your spine and look in a little. Legs stay strong, arms are firm. Inhale, sink the spine down and look forward. Exhale, round the spine and look in. Inhale, sinking the spine down and looking forward. Small, slow movements. Exhale, round the spine and look in. One more. Inhale, soften and look forward. Exhale, round and look in. Come to flat back, tent the right hand and peel open to a simple twist. 
hand can be on the flat part of your back. You can utilize a block underneath the right hand. Feel your way through this morning. Left hand comes down, claw the mat and spring your right foot forward to their hips with distance. On the fingertips, long spine or hands can arrive to the front of the shins. Exhale, fold into yourself, let your head go. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer and drop your arms. So just stand for a second in your body and feel. You may want to practice with your feet a little separated or let them drift together in their own time. Sweep your arms straight up towards the sky. Look up with your eyes. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips to prepare. Slide back into a plank, one, two. Decide what's happening here, chaturanga, or if you're taking it out. Upward facing dog slides you through, or baby cobra, totally cool. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, full breath out. Keeping your arms straight, looking where you want to go, step or float your feet to the top. Long spine, keep your weight forward. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer, drop your arms. Nice, clean, simple movements. Arch right, slide straight up towards the sky, look up. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips and prepare. Slide back into plank. Halfway to your push up. Up dog, smooth or cobra. Hips up and back, downward facing. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Look where you want to go. Step or float your feet there. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer, drop your arms. Arms slide up, dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips and prepare. Step, step to plank. If you feel like you're ready to float, go for it. Shot around up, you're adding. Up dog or cobra. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Each one gets a little better. Breathing the cobwebs out. Look where you want to go. Step or float one more. Long spine, weight is forward. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, anchor. Drag your hands to prayer. Drop your arm. Last one of these guys. Arm slide up. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Let your head go. Come to the fingertips and prepare. Step or float through a vinyasa or not. Up dog is smooth, anchor and press to your hands and the tops of the feet. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Roll forward to plank, hug your right knee towards your navel, your arms stay straight up and down. Squeeze the center line of your body, look forward with your eyes. Keep looking forward, land your right foot forward and through. Come to your fingertips. Integrate your legs and the strength of the lower half of the body and rise with control, crescent lunge. As you come up here, know you can always support with your back knee down. Take your hands to your, hip, to your hips just for a second, guys. Keep your hands close to your body and kind of squeeze your shoulder blades together so it's almost like a hugging of your elbows. On the inhale breath, straighten your right leg. It might not go pin straight. I want you to focus on really honing in on your outer hips and the sides of your legs, like your IT back. Rebound the front thigh. Good. So do that again. Keep the back leg super strong and straight and very slowly start to straighten your right leg on track. Good. Steer your waist forward, rebend, and sit a little deeper. One more. Inhale the breath, straighten, hug in, draw your waist in and up, rebend. Good. Keeping your hands on your hips just for a second. And then just drop your arms by your side body and stand up tall like this. Breathe. Tip your torso forward, you're gonna launch off warrior three. If you'd like to use blocks to help with the balance, you're welcome to do so. Palms face down, shoulder blades hug together. Spin your left thigh down, flex your left toes strong, and lift your heart a little higher. You can always have as much bend behind your right knee as you need to give your leg support. 
Good, we're gonna transition back to warrior one. So turn your back foot and step back with control and then root to rise, arms come up first warrior. Just do your best with it. Guiding your body, but more importantly, your mind into the pose. Steer your left ribs and waist forward, get heavy in that standing front thigh and anchor through the outer blade of your back foot. Hands come down to frame your front foot. So you're gonna take your left palm down, drop your left knee, turn the toes open, come into supported side plank, such as I'm demonstrating. Left hand is down, left knee is down, bend the right leg in half, catch the ankle, kick behind you for a half version of Chopasana. Breathe your chest open, look up with your eyes. Release the right leg and the right arm. Look to the floor. Find your way to plank. Hold plank. Hold push up chaturanga. You pick what you want to do. If you went to a chaturanga, push back to plank. Hug your left knee in and up. Squeeze into the center line of the body. Look forward with your eyes. Keep looking forward, land your left foot all the way forward and through. Take a pretty big, generous step, integrate the legs. And when you feel ready and confident with your balance, grow the pose, high lunge, crescent lunge. Come up to the regular position to begin. Breathe your hip points forward, back leg super strong and straight. Fix your eyes on something that's not moving. Slide your hands to your hips. Squeeze your elbows together so you get this little back bend through your heart here. Keep the back leg super engaged. Put your mind's eye to small movements. Straighten the left leg on track. Make sure you don't go pin straight. Squeeze in. Rebend and sit a little heavier and a little deeper. Keep squeezing the shoulder blades together. Straighten the left leg on track. Hone in. Rebend and sit a little deeper. Draw the belly in. Inhale, straighten the leg on track. Squeeze the muscles. Rebend into that front thigh. Keep the lower half of the body where it is. Just drop the arms by the side body with the palms facing forward. Begin to tip forward and press off with a lot of smooth control. Warrior three, utilize blocks if you need to. Steer the right thigh down. Lift the heart a little higher. Then the rest of the body and fix your eyes on something that's not moving. Stay with it. Transitioning together a smooth operation warrior one. So just guide that leg back. You do your best, spin the right ribs forward, get heavy in that front thigh and grow your eyes and your arms up towards the sky. Take another big juicy breath in. Hands to frame your front foot, root the right palm, drop the right knee and turn the toes on an angle and open to a modified side plank. Just as like I'm demonstrating here. The right hand could be about an inch in front of your right shoulder. Stack yourself open. If you'd like to add the half bind, bend at your knee and catch the foot behind you. Breathe the right ribs open. Look up with your eyes. So you find the pose and then you hold for a few good breaths. You can really get what you need. Release the arm and the leg in slow motion. Hand and knee come to the floor plank position. Halfway to a push up if you're taking that on. Smooth in your transition, up dog or cobra. Hips up and back, downward facing dog is where we meet. Take a deep breath in. Take a full breath out. Good, look where you wanna go, step or float to the top of the mat. Some mornings it's more like a crawl. I get it. Long spine weight is forward. Exhale, fold into yourself. Find your way into your first chair pose with as least resistance as you possibly can find this morning. Yes. Stick your butt way back. Weight is in your heels. Neck is neutral. Shoot up to stand up. Drag your hands to prayer and drop your arms. So from the top, we'll take three sun bees. Arms slide straight up towards the sky. Sit heavy into chair. Weight moves into your heels. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips and prepare yourself. Step, step, or float through a vinyasa. So find what works for your body this morning. 
Up dog is smooth, hips up and back, down dog. The right foot lands, the back foot turns into your version of warrior one. Back down you go through a vinyasa or pausing in a dog and just feeling your practice today. When you're ready on your breath, left foot lands, back foot turns, warrior one. Back down you go on your own count through a vinyasa. We meet in a dog and we hold whenever you're ready. Deep breath in, full breath out. Good, keep the arms super straight. Look where you wanna go, step or float to the top, get there light. Long spine, the weight stays forward. Exhale, fold into yourself. Sit again into a strong chair, weight moves into your heels. Feel that and then use that energy to shoot up to stand up, drag your hands to prayer, drop your arms. Here we go, arms slide straight up towards the sky, sit deeply into chair. Dive over your bent legs, forward fold, head goes. Long spine sets you up, step or float through your vinyasa. So add or subtract what you need to make this work. If you've got a lot of energy, add in an extra push up. From your down dog, the right foot lands, the back foot turns, a version of warrior one that works. Back down we go through a vinyasa. Smooth in that transition. Downward facing dog. Left foot lands on your own breath, your own beat. Come on up, warrior one. Back down you go through a vinyasa. Upward facing dog is a smooth operation. No jerky in that lower back. Hips up and back, down dog. We meet there. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Arms stay nice and straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Sit into chair. Weight moves into your heels. Press up to stand up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Arms slide straight up towards the sky, sitting on into chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Come to the fingertips and prepare. Step or flow through your vinyasa. Up dog is smooth, hips up and back, downward facing. Right foot lands, back foot turns, come on up warrior one. Back down you go, feel everything that you're doing, nothing's to be missed. Up dog if you're taking, hips up and back, down dog. Left foot lands, back foot turns, come on up. Hands come back down, vinyasa. Upward facing, nice and smooth, hips up and back, downward facing. Allow yourself to feel, don't get ahead. Look where you wanna go, keep the arms straight, step or float to the top. Long spine on the inhale breath, exhale fold, sit into chair, weight moves into your heels. Press up to stand up, drag your hands to prayer, drop your arms. Have your blocks to the top, separate your feet. Take your right ankle and cross it over your left thigh. So you're making a figure four. Bring your arms up towards the sky and then sit deep into chair. So as you sit back into chair, flex your right foot super strong and stick your butt way back. Keep reaching your arms forward and either take the back of the triceps to the front of that right shin and kind of karate chop for the hip opener or utilize blocks at any angle here to give yourself a little balancing here. Flex the foot around the outside of the left tricep and hold. You wanna keep your chest forward and open. So look forward with your eyes. Steer your right hip back. Hug that those, both those hips in and flex that standing, that right foot super strong as you get heavier in that standing left leg. Stay with it. We're staying a little longer to get a little bit more of a juicy hip opener this morning. So I treat transitions in this practice like poses. So. Transition is a pose. Let's move slowly and try and stay together. Keep the shape of the lower half of the body. If your hands are on the blocks, everybody bring their hands to your hips. Try the best that you can with this. 
Start to stand up. Don't let your right foot touch the ground and draw the right knee in. Grab the front of that right kneecap. Keep your left hand on your hip. You're just creating a 90 degree angle. This whole little sequence can be done with a bent leg. Don't worry if you can't straighten. Left hand stays on hip to start. Reach down, grab your big toe. The leg can stay with as much bend. Standing left leg has to keep the power and the strength. Begin to move your right leg forward and through at any amount. The leg can stay bent, okay? Left arm can slide up towards the sky. You move on your own body's count. Breathe. Look forward with your eyes, soften your right shoulder away from your right ear. Stand up a little taller. Keep breathing your right leg forward and begin to change the grip and make the twist into a revolved version. So the right arm peels back. This can be done with a bent leg. So do what you can. Look sideways or begin to look back. Stand up nice and tall. Give it a little bit more juice, a little bit more power as you hang with it. Good, look forward with your eyes. Both legs, both arms stay up and the leg can bend in half. Just pull around to center. Lower the right foot down, bring your hands to prayer and stand up nice and tall. Right leg is the standing leg. Cross the left ankle over the front of that right shin. And right shin, right, right quadricep is what I meant. And then sweep your arms up towards the sky and begin to sit into chair. Flex the foot super strong. Then start to hinge. As you come forward in this long hinge, karate chop that front left shin with the back of your triceps. Hands can gather to a prayer where they can rest on blocks. Steer your left hip back, rip your right hip underneath you and flex your left toes around the outside of that right tricep. Lead with your chest, get heavy in your standing leg and hold. So just breathe and maintain stability and get a beautiful hip opener here, a few more breaths. So wherever you are, keep the shape of the body very low to the ground. Just bring your hands, transfer your hands to your hips. Now, as you come up standing, don't let your left leg touch. Do your best, draw, draw the left leg into a 90 degree angle. Left hand's gonna come to the front of that left knee area, right hand to hip. Decide if you want bent leg or straight. Hook the big toe and begin to breathe the leg forward any amount. The right arm can slide up. Look forward with your eyes. Draw the left shoulder down the back and move the hips forward. Stand up a little taller. Keep the leg moving forward and just switch the grip with the leg straight or the leg bent, it doesn't matter. Stand up very tall. Look into that left hand, just look sideways, whatever works for you. If you fall, you come back and you try it again. Stay with it, couple more. Begin to pull forward, both arms go up. I bend my leg in half, which is a little bit uh, nicer on that lower back, but the leg can be straight. Arms moving straight up, lower the left leg down. Sit deep into chair, stay with it. Exhale, fold over the leg, let your head go. Come to the fingertips and prepare. Step or float through your vinyasa, okay? Up dog is smooth, hips up and back, downward facing dog. If you have two blocks, take one and just place it to the front of the mat and one to the back. If you only have one, it can move around with you through the next little bit here. It's not a big deal. Find your way to a down dog and meet you there. Land your right foot forward and through. Come to your fingertips. Turn your back foot on a strong angle and cartwheel open warrior two. Yeah. Breathe yourself open here. Yes. Track your right knee over your right ankle and roll your right thigh open. Find the position that works for you, lengthen the tailbone, and then if you can, close your eyes and just breathe. Let your energy just kind of move you and you're on your mat, like 
not actually move you, move you, but move your breath and let your energy. Sometimes we get to our mouths and we feel a little stuck. I'm gonna stay pretty heavy in your legs here. Keep the shape, blink your eyes open, reach out. Take your hand to the outside of the foot today. I've been going with a block. I've been placing my block super high. Yeah, it just feels better in my hip. So medium is acceptable, low, no block, but make this work, okay? The left arm slides straight up. Make a marriage between the outside of the right leg and the inside of the right arm. Left arm up feels great for me. Dropping the arm up and forward can some, sometimes be a little funky in the shoulder. So just kind of feel your way through this. Turn your bottom ribs, grip your right hip underneath you, activate the left leg and hold. Crown of the head is moving over the front foot. Just you, your body, and your breath on the mat. Hold the posture and breathe through it. If your top arm reach wrapped up and forward, just slide it straight up towards the sky. Use the strength of your left arm to pull you up to warrior two. Take the bounce out. Lengthen your tailbone. Get heavy in your legs and breathe your chest open. Look forward, circle your hands to frame your front foot, move through a vinyasa or go to a dog. Up dog is smooth, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward, turn your back foot on a strong angle and come on up warrior two. Yeah, back foot's on a strong angle. Check in with your alignment. Just remind yourself that your torso is never facing forward. It's always stacked kind of on top of your hips. Get heavy in that front thigh. Yeah. Close your eyes and breathe. And every exhale, you ride it out a little deeper, a little further, you get a little heavier, maintain. Link your eyes open, keep the shape of your body, let your left hand come to the outside of your left foot, extended side angle A. Top arm can reach straight up or can wrap up and forward. If it's going up and forward, it's like a bow and arrow. From the blade of that right foot all the way through those right fingertips. Soften the shoulder down the back, Crown of the head is forward, left hip hugs in pretty firmly and bottom ribs twist open. Stay with it. See if you can lighten the feeling and the expression and just breathe through whatever you're feeling. If the arm drifted forward like a bow and arrow, just let it stretch straight up. Top arm and top leg is going to pull you up warrior two. Bring your hands to your hips, guys. Straighten the front leg. Pivot the toes in. So from your hip, your right hip, you're going to pivot your toes out. So you're all facing the back edge of your mat. Turn your back toes in a little on an angle and then open up your arms. You're setting up for triangles. This is why I said to have blocks at the front and the back. Pivot into triangle. Make sure your block is nearby. Side ribs nice and long. Yes, grip your outer hips in and stack yourself up nicely here. So with this left arm today, you can have it straight up towards the sky or you're welcome to wrap it behind you if you wanna add a little extra, like find these stuff. The hand can come behind you, you can wrap to the inner part of that thigh or you can just have your hand to your hip. This is a nice way to gather the shoulder as well. Keep spinning your bottom ribs, yeah. Crown of the head is moving forward and you're nice and long in your obliques and your spine. Good, keep this shape. You're gonna look down and you're gonna move nice and slow and float to half moon. If you added the half bind, you can keep it here. Find what works with the half moon as far as the block placement. Enough forward and enough over to the right and high enough that you can really get that side ribs to be open. 
Flex your left toes super strong. Breathe. If you want to add the bind, bend the knee, grab your ankle and kick behind you. Soften behind the right knee. This is for the chopasana. Optional. Get lighter in your bottom hand, maybe. Breathe yourself open. Any variations that you added on, just come to a half moon. You can extend the arm and extend the leg. Four more breaths, stay with it. Flex the top toes and see if you can look up with your eyes. Reminding yourself of the transition, it's super slow and it's effective, it's its own thing. Triangle pose, step back. You can use the block if you need it. Pull up on the front of the shin and revisit triangle. Strong legs, strong core, top arm pulls you up with straight arms and straight legs. Good work, guys. Hands come to your hips. Pivot the right toes in and from your left hip, turn your left toes out. So you're all facing the front of your mat. Open up your arms, good. Set yourself up for a fabulous triangle. If you need to relocate your block, then you do that. Set up for a fabulous triangle here. Start with its natural way. Side ribs nice and long, big openness of the chest. And then if you wanna add in any little arm variations, hand to hip, wrapping the arm around, give it a go. Back leg is super strong. My front leg always has a little bend behind it. Side ribs long, breathe. I look to like, I like to look sideways and a little up. I find that gives me a little bit more openness of my collarbone and my chest. So play with that. So it's all about the transitions in this practice. Make them really smooth, concise, and crisp. Looking down, transferring forward into half moon, treating them like they're their own poses. So setting up for a nice solid half moon, the left foot stays forward, the hip hugs in, and the right leg pops up. Half bind, hand to hip, anything goes here. Find the alignment that works best. Crown of the head is forward, breathing those left ribs open. Add in the bind if you feel that you wanna add a little more, the, the right hand will grab the right ankle and will kick behind you. Soften a little behind the left knee, get a little lighter in that bottom hand if you can find that. Stay with it, a few more. If you add in anything fun, release with the leg and release the arm. We'll meet in a regular half moon. Mindful, slow transitions, triangle pose. Do it nice and slow. Nice work. Anchor through your feet, the legs, the side ribs. Top arm, top leg pulls you back up, hands to your hips. So pivot your feet around and just step to the top of the mat. So just step to the top of the mat. Sit into chair, weight moves into your heels. Yeah. Drag your hands to prayer and heart, inhale the breath, hook the left elbow to the outside of the right knee and twist. And this can always be done with your feet separated. Yeah, hips with distance. If your low back is very sensitive, Weight stays in your heels and just pay attention to the two knees because what happens is we twist and we end up twisting from our hips, which is not what we're looking for. Keep everything nice and aligned. Maybe open up your arms if you want a little more or just stay. Keep the breath flowing. Stay in your legs, guys. Chair pose, stay in your legs. Look forward with your eyes. You can do it. Keep the legs solid. Drag the hands to prayer. Let's take it the other direction. So just have an opportunity to reset, recommit, and then get in there. Watch that the right knee doesn't slide past the left. Stay real even keeled here. Nice, crown of the head is moving forward. The weight stays back, twist open. Use your breath and get in there a little more. 
Two more. Heavy in and your legs, chair pose. Look forward with your eyes. So when you get to the chair, drop down like two or three inches lower, like really get low. Breathe your collarbone and your chest open and then use all that bottled up energy to shoot up to stand up and drag your hands to prayer. Good. Have your blocks back at the top of the mat just in case you need them. Feet hips width distance. Take your hands to your hips and just slide your left leg back about three, four feet. Yeah. Keep your right hand on your hip. Let the left arm drift up. Come halfway down. Steer your right hip back and come the rest of the way down into twisting triangles. So everything we've done is kind of set us up to get here. Right hand to the flat part of your back. Feel like someone's got you by your hips. They're steering your hips towards the back edge of the mat. Your torso is moving forward. So it's a nice expression. Look sideways or look up and breathe. Breathe yourself open here. Maybe the right arm stacks up. Good. Keep gripping your right hip in. Look down. Right hand can come to the flat part of the mat. Just move the block forward and then pop your left leg up. So now we go to a twisting revolved Ardhan Shudrasana. Hug your hips in. So if it's not for you this morning, just stay in a twisting triangle. Just have a longer expression, a longer hold. If not, set yourself up. It's like a revolved warrior three, essentially. Back leg lifts up, top arm opens, and you breathe yourself open here. Rip the right hip underneath you, integrate the inner part of your left thigh and twist open. Look to the floor, right hand comes down. Listen carefully, if you're in twisting triangle, triangle, just take a bigger step. Everybody else, giant step back, crescent lunge, and we rise, here we go. High lunge, always know you can drop your knees, slide your hands to a prayer at heart. Inhale your breath, lean up, hook the elbow and twist. Grip the right hip underneath you, integrate the back left leg and get the spine very long. Crown of the head will line up with the back left foot. Twisting open here. Good. Ride out the exhale breath, get in there a little deeper. Stay with it. One more big breath in, look to the floor. The left hand's gonna go flat, the right arm's gonna peel into an easy twist. We kind of started the practice like this early on. Transitions are everything. Roll to the outer blade, and you can either step and bend your right leg into a version that's supported, or stagger the feet, or set the feet up on top of one another for Vashi stats and a side plank. You can drop your bottom knee like we did early in the practice. That's a great option as well. I like that Rima, the feet staggered works really great. Aligning the hips. If you wanna work the obliques a little more, top arm can wrap forward over your ear, like we did in an extended side angle. Transition, super slow, plank position. Don't just flop halfway to a push up if you're adding in. Up dog, if you can take. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Exhale it all out. Look where you wanna go, step or float to the top. We'll just be consistent with how we get in and out today. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold into yourself. Take your hands to your hips and just come up standing. Great. Have your blocks nearby, separate your feet, hips with distance and slide your right leg back. Hands to your hips, left hand on the hip, right arm extends up. Inhale, the breath come halfway. You want to steer the hip back and then utilize your breath, uh, your block for twisting triangle. Set yourself up here. Integrate the inner and outer part of your legs. Stack your body up nicely here. Stack the left arm up if you can. Just pay attention to the bottom shoulder that it's not rolling in. Press strong to the blades of your feet and twist open. So we get to the pose and then we hold. So the beautiful thing about this practice is the twisting triangle is not something, something that you wanna stay in, you can stay. If you'd like to work to revolve Arda this morning, look down. 
move the block forward and step up. Back leg will lift. Hand can always slide to the flat part of the back for a little information. You can always play with a flex or pointed toe, lifting from the inner right thigh, hugging your left hip in. And breathing your way through this pretty deep twist here. Two more. Eyes meet the floor, both hands come down to floor or blocks. Giant step back. If you stayed in twisting, just take a longer stance. Get your legs arranged and then come up high lunge, crescent lunge. Drag the hands to prayer. Integrate the spine nice and long. Lean out, hook the elbow and twist. Back leg is set up like a plank position, or maybe you're opting for the knee down and giving yourself a little TLC. So when I was in person the other day, I was noticing a lot of rounding in the spine here. So just remind yourself, if you look sideways, or you look up, it's going to be a lot easier for extension of the neck. If you look back, we end up rounding. Yeah. The breath is everything when you start to fatigue in the yoga practice. So just come back to the breath and hold here. Good, look to the floor, place both hands down, root the right palm for this transition, peel the left arm open. So the right hand is set up, the shoulder is nicely stacked, roll to the outer blade. This is a nice variation here. This is a modified version with the top leg bent in half. You can see a little bit more directly in the camera. You can stagger the feet, you can stack the feet, you can drop the bottom knee and modify. Any variation here, Vashi Stasana side plank. Find something you can hold for a few more breaths. If you want to work your core, the top arm can wrap forward. The transition is slow. Look to the floor plank position. When you get to plank, pause. When you get to plank, pause and slowly transition to your forearms. You can always drop your knees. So transition to your forearms. Yep, you're in forearm plank. Nice, forearm plank. Yes, in integrating your abdominal wall in forearm plank. That's it. So the knees are lifted, the belly's drawing in. You're in a straight line of energy. You're broadening across the upper shoulders and the collarbone, and you're cre creating a tremendous amount of abdominal strength for yourself right now. Three more breaths, and we'll move on. Walk your feet in, dolphin pose. Just a few breaths, I promise. Walk in, dolphin. We want to get our head below our heart. Good. Wrap the elbows in a little closer, guys. Perfect. And creep your toes closer towards your elbows and tighten up that stance on your forearms. Perfect. If you've got this, breathe your right leg up just for a breath. Only hip height. Lower the right leg down in a controlled way. Breathe your left leg up. Lower the left leg down. Dolphin hold. Resting child's pose, drop to your knees. When I say resting, that means your arms go back. Your arms go back. Yes. Nice work, guys. Slide your arms forward. Press up onto all fours. Let's go to a tabletop position here for a sec. Yeah, so go to tabletop position. Curl the toes into the mat. Look forward with your eyes. Take your right foot and just step it forward, come to your fingertips. So in this version, I want your knee a little bit more straight up and down. So sweep your arms straight up towards the sky. Yeah. Good. So first, energize your fingers, look up, and it's a very soft opening of your chest and your collarbone. So keep all that and then drop your arms and breathe your chest open. Good. If you want to clasp your hands and begin to take those clasped hands down the back of that left thigh, give it a go. But remember, 
Open the side ribs, open the chest. Don't dump into the lower spine, breathe. Rip your right hip in stronger. Pull the torso up, unravel your arms to the sky. Breathe your fingertips alive to keep this nice openness. Take the hands down to the ground. Listen carefully. You're gonna press up to a three-legged down dog. The right leg swings up and back. Flex the right foot super strong. Come forward, hug your right knee towards your navel. Arms straight up and down. Right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Remember, this practice is all about transitioning slow. Come forward, hug the knee in. Right leg up and back. Come forward, hug the knee in. Land it into a half pigeon. Yeah. Let yourself just kind of melt into this. We'll stay for about a minute. Good. Use the strength of your body. Press to a down dog first just to reset. Then roll forward to plank. Drop to your knees, tabletop position. Might need to tighten it up a little. Look forward with your eyes. Land your left foot forward and through. Come to your fingertips. Make sure your right knee is straight up and down. You might need to pad. Come up so everything is created in an angle here. Arm stretch up. So really breathe yourself open. So sometimes it's not about going to the deepest pose, but it's finding these moments where you can just engage and just be present here. Good. So just breathe your chest open and think back bend. Think back bend. Doesn't need to be deep. Then drop your arms down. Continue the openness. Continue the back bend. Maybe you want to clasp your hands. Maybe you want a little more. And you slide your hands down the back of the thigh. So feel your way through. Grip your left hip in. Keep the openness of the body, but more important is the openness of the mind as you maintain. Keep yourself open. Don't let the open close. Come up nice and slow. Sweep your arms up. Hands to frame your front foot. You're going to breathe yourself into a three-legged down dog. Left leg goes up and back. Mindful in the transitions. Hug the hips in. Come forward plank. Hug the left knee in. Extend the left leg up and back. Nice and slow. Nice and methodical. Come forward. Hug the knee in. Extend the leg up and back. Last time's the charm. Hug the knee in, scoop it out, and then land into half pigeon and melt. Next minute, just find stillness in the pose so you can get what you need. Use the strength of your body, start to come up. Swing onto the left side and move your right leg forward. So bend your knees in half and lay down. Final pose here before we just take a little supine twist is either a supported bridge, a bridge, a full wheel, or creating the illusion of legs up the wall. A lot of us just like to place that block, do supported bridge, and then extend the legs up. I wanna go for about 10 breaths. Maybe you wanna start with a bridge or supported bridge, work your way into a full wheel, or maybe you're just like, I'm done. I just wanna have restorative and really just find some peace as we like to call it. So find something that works here. Yes, if your legs are straight up, what I suggest is, is have a block underneath there, underneath your low back and interlace your hands around the block. So you really create 
a series of back bends. That's great, Rima. Steer the feet forward if you're going up into a full wheel. So as you move through the practice, it's, it's great to be encouraged to push yourself, but it's also nice to be encouraged to back off and find smoother, easier poses to just kind of let your body fall into. You're about halfway there. So if you tried on something a little bit more challenging and you want to back out or vice versa, now's the chance to play around. If your legs are straight up and down, bend the knees in half first, get the feet gathered to the floor next. Everyone should be relatively similar here. Remove any objects out from underneath your lower back and slowly transition your lower spine to the floor. Hug the knees in, give them a little squeeze. It should feel pretty good. And then with your legs together, just drop your knees to the right. You can even slide a block going the long direction in between your legs. I kind of like that. Yeah. And just take a supine twist. So I place mine the long direction in between my thighs. And then I drop my knees to the right. And then come through center. And I just kind of steer my hips a little to the right. And then my knees drop to the left as I drop open here. And then I roll to center, remove any objects out of the way. Take one final squeeze in. And then on my next exhale, releasing into master pose, Shavasana, complete, complete relaxation. So don't chintz yourself here. Give yourself the next minute or two to just let your body, but more importantly, your mind and your breath just kind of come to a complete <clears throat> relaxation state. Take a pretty full breath in and then follow it up with a really deep exhale breath. Hug your knees slowly in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. A squeeze of gratitude is always a good thing. And when you're ready, however you're ready, rock yourself up. You may not be ready for another half an hour or till tomorrow. So come up nice and slow, sit up in this new body of ours, new mind. And feel the effects of this awesome practice. This is my one of my favorite ways to practice, by the way. Hands to prayer. Bow your head. Always have gratitude. It's a good thing. Lift your head. Open your eyes. Namaste. Go out there. Have an awesome one. I'm teaching in person tomorrow. I'm back at Zoom Friday. Stay tuned for any changes to come. Talk to you soon.